Hi everyone, I'm Dave. And I'm Robert. Welcome to our Chipola fifth quarter podcast. We're so thankful for Chipola College for sponsoring our podcast. We're filming here in the beautiful studios, the main campus of Chipola College in Mariana, Florida, where we talk about best practices from the, the football field, <clears throat> from teamwork, uh, leadership, managerial best practices, and apply those to our baccalaureate program, our Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. And this is an exciting time. We just came off a big Super Bowl win. And um, who won that? Was that the Packers? Who, who, who won that game? <laughs> oh, they got the MVP of the, right? That was uh, Aaron Rodgers, right? Yeah, I knew he won something. I wasn't sure if it was a Super Bowl or, or what. But. I think I can go the rest of the year without hearing those Green Bay jokes. <laughs> All right. It's a long year still. Hey, hey, the best is yet to come, right? All right. So I, I want to kind of balance the scales in this episode, and I want to talk about the qualities of a good leader. You know, we talk a lot about the football side. You know, we talk stats and we talk numbers as far as yardage and pass completions, interceptions, all that stuff. Um, but I want to spend this episode talking about the qualities of a good leader. And I want to ask the question to those that watch, what are the qualities of a good leader? Um, so just feel free to stop me at any time as I go through, you know, some of the qualities of a good well, leader. Well, you got this down, Rob. Keep uh, going. Uh, here we go. So we're going to start with the first one, which is vision, which is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. You know, vision is very important. I can't think of a team or, you know, a company, what have you, that sits down and says, okay, you know, we're going to uh, start up a company, but we have no idea where we're going. You know, every every team, every company, the business side of things, you got to have a great vision. Um, and, and even in, in the football side of things, uh, you know, every team, every coaching staff needs to have a great vision. Uh, but I see, you know, in this day and time, everybody's going for the same thing. When sports, it's to win the big one, you know. Uh, pro, it's it's to win the Super Bowl. You know, the the collegiate level, it's to win a national championship, high school, win state championship. But you know, there, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that we've talked about. You know, and and there's been some things that we haven't really discussed. And you know, vision is very important. Number two is courage. Do you have the courage to go after the vision? Do you have the courage to complete the task at hand? Courage, you know, the definition is the ability to do something that frightens one. You know, some people are scared of success. So, wow, some great topics to get us started, Rob. So the thought of vision, you look at all these companies today having to compete, it seems like the global marketplace becomes more competitive every month and every year. So if you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the thought of vision, so one, maybe with vision, you kind of got to know where you're at. You got to know yourself, got to know your team. So they knew they had what? They had an amazing defense, top five, top three defense, and they needed, he mentioned, Brady brought that vision, that focus on showing <clears> others <throat> how to win. So... They knew they needed an offensive component. They had the defense in place. So that vision really helped them, I think, win the big game. It sure did. And Brady's got those qualities of, of overall being a leader. But, you know, it, it goes far beyond him. It's a team effort. You know, there's a reason why football is an 11-man sport. Um, and, you know, Brady exemplifies a lot of these qualities, you know, because he's been in it, you know, since his early 20s. Um, and, you know, that just goes back to, to proper management. You know, it goes far beyond the coaching staff. You know, the players – and they're talking about grown adult players in the league. So they need to put themselves in the best position to win, and they need to do what's best for business. Hence, last week we talked about, uh, you know, Mike Evans and all them talking about taking a pay cut, you know, or, or whatever it took to keep people on and to keep the success of the team or the company uh, going. And, and that goes back to vision. You know, if, if you want to build off the previous success that you've had, then the best thing to do would be to make the sacrifices. And that's something that's not even in my list, but I'll throw it in there uh, because it's fitting. You know, good leaders, are they sacrificial? Yes. Do they make the changes when necessary? Yes. If you want to build and maintain your success, then you'll make the changes where necessary. First of all, you got to have good vision. Second, you've you got to have the courage to go after the vision, to complete the vision. Um, and, and there's another, you know, part B to that definition of courage earlier. You know, I'll go back over it. It's the ability to do something that frightens one. And then there's another definition that says having strength in the face of pain or grief. How do you handle those seven and nine seasons like Tampa Bay had last year? How do you handle those, you know, in college? How do you handle back-to-back -back six and six seasons, you know, barely making it to a bowl game? You know, how do you handle – um, you know, having players transfer or other players dropping out, that sort of thing. Um, so it takes vision, it takes courage. And the third one, you know, we'll move right along, it's integrity, which is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness in the state of being whole and undivided. That's a big one because you got a lot of locker rooms these days that you got a lot of players from different cultures, different races, different backgrounds, and a lot of these guys, they have philosophical differences. And it's very hard for them to connect on things. And a lot of that that off the field locker room drama 
ends up leading to a lot of divide, if you will, and they end up, you know, separating. So it's it's important to have the vision. You got to have the courage to go after it, and you need to maintain integrity. And that's something that I don't see a whole lot in this day and time. You know, a lot of people uh, kind of sell out their integrity at the expense of somebody else's, you know, misery. It seems like. Yeah, so you look at courage. Wow, I like that as a second point to discuss. Uh, and, and these three all flow together, Rob. So great list to get us started and keep us moving in this podcast. So courage, looking at the Bucks again, you know, just this application of the football field and applying that to, to the marketplace and the business environment. So they had the courage. Brady's in his 40s, right, kind of nearing the end of his contract. Did the Patriots see something in him? Why didn't they want to work hard to renew him? I would call that maybe greed. They were looking in the wrong place. So do we take a chance? There were others that were thinking about Brady. So they had the courage to step up, realizing what they needed to take <clears throat> those next steps. And, and boy, did that work for him. So that took some courage. It did, but you got to understand something. You know, the NFL is also a business, and there's an ugly side to business. You know, there, there's the side that we see, you know, the, the fans, you know, they buy the tickets and the merchandise and they go watch the games. But what they don't see is there's a business side to it. And in the business side, it can get real ugly. You know, your front office and, and your, your financial accountants and people that handle the money and, and the salary cap and agents, there, there's so much that gets thrown around that we don't see. And so it's important to remember that you can't take stuff like that personal. I'm thinking of Steve McNair. I don't know how much you remember about Steve McNair. Tennessee Titans? Tennessee Titans. All right. He, I mean, rest in peace. Yeah. You know, he's, right. well, has he passed away now about over 10 years? Um, you know, it's, it was kind of sad. But, you know, I look at his story. He was a country boy from Mississippi. Uh, he loved playing football. You know, he grew up in a, with a family, I think, three or four brothers. Um, and so he grew up around sports, and, and he went through college. You know, Florida and Florida State had offered him a scholarship at the time, uh, and he turned it down to go to a smaller school. The name escapes me at the moment, but he went to a much smaller school where he shined as a quarterback because Florida and Florida State wanted him to play, I think it was wide receiver or running back at the time. Wow, he would have been a big, like, tight end type of receiver. Right, yeah, well, big he, man. He, was a pretty, yeah. he was a pretty big quarterback. Yes, to, for sure. Yeah, to be completely honest. So he goes to this small school. He shines for four years, declares for the draft. Tennessee Titans end up, you know, end up taking him. He, you know, he, he puts his heart and soul into the Tennessee Titans. What was it, the first two or three seasons? He leads them to a, a Super Bowl against the Rams. They come up short. Was that Eddie George? Oh, yeah. That, that oh. Was, that, that was the Eddie George days. And then on the other side of the ball, you know, just kind of mixing in. You had guys like Marshall Falk for the Rams at running back and Kurt Warner at quarterback. You know, you had some great guys on the other side of the ball. So they weren't facing a no-name team. Uh, but, you know, the, the story of Steve McNair to kind of tie all this in is, you know, he, he really put his body on the line. You know, he suffered probably more injuries as a quarterback, you know, in his few seasons with the Titans because he, he was not your average quarterback. He wasn't going to sit back in the pocket if he knew he could run. And there was a lot of times he'd take the hit. You know, he'd drop that shoulder, took a lot of hits. You know, he had the knee injury. And uh, there was a few times he, he, you know, he broke his sternum. Uh, and then over time that, that caught up with him. And he, he found himself in a situation one day where the Tennessee Titans knew he was, he was coming up on the end of his time with them. And they said, look, if he comes back out, you know, and, and tries to, to rally back from this injury, I can't I think it was a, like a broken sternum. They said, do we have to pay him? And the front office said, yeah, you still have to pay him his contract. And so they ended up trading him away to the Baltimore Ravens where he finished out his career. So that is an example of the business side. And, and McNair, wow, he didn't run like uh, the gazelles we see at quarterback today. You know, he ran more like a Tim Tebow, like a fullback. So Definitely. he took a lot of hits, a lot of punishment. You mentioned a couple of thoughts with the Rams. Was it Kurt Warner? Talk about the courage, right, of someone. He was in the AFL, right, the Arena Football League. And then he was, like, stocking shelves as a clerk in a grocery store. Next thing you know, he had the courage to step up, follow his dreams. What a great analogy and application for us today. And became Super Bowl MVP, you know. So that is amazing. What a successful story. And um, and now in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, And definitely earned it. And that'll move us into our next point on the qualities of a good leader, humility. This is a big one with me. Uh, it's a modest or low view of one's own importance, uh, and it's a sense of humbleness. You know, do we see a lot of humility in the league today? It's kind of rare. I'm going to go out on a limb. Uh, just my personal opinion, I think a lot of it's rare. You know, you'll have players here and there that will do a lot for the public and everything, but I'm talking about from a team's perspective, you know, or, uh, you know, like you, you take like Mike Evans and stuff, willing to take a pay cut. Uh, and, of course, it's not like he's still not making enough money, but it's the principle of it. You know, he's willing to take that cut on his contract and say, hey, whatever it takes to keep this team together, whatever whatever it takes to make this business successful, you know, that's what I'll do. Um, and and it, it, it kind of takes me back to, to some of the days like when I was a kid. You know, you've you seen a lot of teammates looking out for one another. And, you know, there was a lot of times that, 
you know, if we had to play different positions to help somebody out, we would. And nowadays, you don't see that as much. You got a lot of people saying, "I don't want to play that position. I don't. I don't want to be a selfless leader. I don't want to be a selfless person and do what's best for the team." Makes me think of of the football application that we constantly bring back to our discussion, talking about leadership, talking about making the right decisions, of having ethics, integrity. Where were the Patriots at? I mean. Brady had taken pay cuts, you know, with his previous salary, you know, had given that to other players just to keep the team moving forward. It's just hard to believe that they lost focus and that they couldn't re-sign him and they couldn't, because uh, they would have made a run into the playoffs for sure. So to me, that is a poor example of integrity. They, they lost focus on, even on the business side, why wouldn't they want to win? It doesn't seem like Brady was so focused on his contract, so... I don't know, some good examples there, and, and who knows? You're never behind closed doors. It just looks a little suspicious on the surface. Well, I'm going to be careful. I'll give my opinion on it, um, and, and you're right. You know, neither one of us were behind closed doors, so we don't know what was said in the meeting room, you know, before they let him go. But if I had to guess, you got to figure, you know, he stuck with the Patriots 19 years. He, that he was with them a while, and out of that 19 years, he delivers, what, six Super Bowls, you know, to one franchise. You know, so if, if it becomes a question of did he earn – whatever he asked for salary-wise, I would say yes. You know, in a 19-year span, the man delivers six Super Bowls. Yes, his resume screams, okay, pay me what I'm worth. I think what a lot of it had to do, and this is, again, this is just my personal opinion. Belichick, you know, he's the kind of guy, he carries this reputation of, I'm going to pinch pennies any way I can. I'm going to squeeze numbers any way I can. You know, any, anything that he could do to save New England a dollar he was going to do. And that's why a lot of players ended up leaving. And I think the whole Brady situation, he more than made his mark with them. And it was time for him to prove that he could go to another team and make something else happen. And a lot of the critics and analysts were saying, I think he's reached that cliff. You know, he's reached his peak. He's, he's done. It's all downhill from there. But then he goes to a whole new franchise and totally proves all the critics wrong. You know, people were saying he's washed up. He's not – he's just not worth it anymore. He goes the first year to a new team, leads him to an 11-5 season. MVP. MVP. I mean, at 43 years old, I mean, you know, and this league has changed so much. 43 years young. Yeah, well, 43 years young, yeah, I'll give, I'll give respect to where it's due. But the point is the game has changed, you know, in the last 20 years. And here he is still running with these young cats like it's nothing. So, wow, yeah, so I agree. You look at Belichick, um, could have been focused on the money, but he's also focused on every play, on getting the most value from that play of winning at all costs. There's a good takeaway <clears throat> for that because he'll be a Hall of Fame, probably one of the best, if he's not best coaches ever. You know, they're not the 72 Dolphins that went undefeated with Shula, if that's the right year, but they, they've won a lot. Um, so Gronk left. He came back, right, with the Bucks to play with uh, Brady. And you kind of get the sense that the, the focus was on winning at, at all costs, that you couldn't make a mistake. Brady, that year that led up to it in the playoffs, threw, what, an interception or two. So they might have been thinking 19 years, hey, you've done your best. It's time to move on. What a poor decision that was. We don't need to keep dwelling on that. But uh, that's a great example of them doing everything right, misstepping, and, and they really lost everything. They're not going to get a first draft pick. You know, they're kind of in the middle of the pack. And they didn't make the playoffs you know, by a long shot. Yeah, and that, that leads me into my next point on the qualities of a good leader. Uh, you got strategic planning. This, this is a big one. It, it's an organizational management activity uh, that is used to set priorities, focus energy and resources, strengthen operations, and ensure that others are working towards common goals and are willing to adjust if needed. That is a big one. You know, it's good to have a vision, but you need to have a strategic plan on how to accomplish the vision. It almost seems like uh, the Patriots – didn't embody that this last year. I mean, they had been so great that 19 year run of having a strategic plan and winning of all costs. People would retire, they'd bring them back. They did everything right. But this one year is an example of maybe keeping that strategic plan in the forefront and remembering what got you there. Seems like they forgot, but uh, not to beat up on the Patriots anymore. The Bucks, on the other hand, have the right strategic plan. They knew what they needed, they knew themselves, they had the vision, and boy, did they deliver. Oh, absolutely. And that leads me into the next point. Focus. It's the center of interest or activity, the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. You need to be focused on and make clear 
what your goals are. And I think Tampa Bay, you know, proved that this season. And, you know, let, let's take it down to the, to the collegiate level. You know, we haven't talked about FSU in a little while. I think Norville is starting to get focused, you know, to finishing with a top 20 recruiting class uh, just, you know, a few weeks ago. So I think his plan for FSU and his vision for the football program is, is starting to come to light. I, I know he made two offers to um, some West Coast boys out in California. Uh, I think one of them was at the quarterback position. So we'll kind of see. I could be wrong about that, but we'll see how that works out. So it's important, you know, to have focus. Uh, and the last one, cooperation, the process of working together to the same end and assistance by ready compliance with the request. Be ready to make the necessary changes. So, wow, those changes. Uh, talk about FSU. We've seen it in the Bucks. When you talk about football at FSU, are you talking about European football or American football? I'm definitely talking American okay. football. Okay. I wasn't sure they're looking at yeah. – <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, hey, at this point, I'll buy season tickets for soccer if we just win a game. <laughs> so, boy, but uh, yeah, recruiting class is huge. That might turn it around, and yeah. maybe we'll have multiple winners at multiple levels in Florida coming up. So, we can only hope. Hey, they, they call it Champa Bay for a reason. Uh, and there's a reason why some good recruit, recruits, you know, come out of South Florida as well. And that, that leads me into just to kind of wrap up our points, uh, a couple good quotes here. Uh, number one, I don't know who this quote is, is from. I was told two different coaches have made it, so I just left out the name. Uh, but it says, average players want to be left alone. Good players want to be coached, and great players want to be told the truth. It's important to be open, honest, transparent with your players. And even as the boss of a company, it's important to be very transparent with your employees too. You know, that, that ensures success. Um, so to end on a positive note, though, you, I think you have maybe another recap here, uh, Belichick. So something that he, um, in an interview, talked about once has always stayed with me is the thought, they said, what do you look for when you're bringing in these great players, when you're recruiting at the collegiate level? He says, I'll be honest with you, what I look for is do they really love the game of football? And I'm thinking, wow, how obvious is that? But are they there because they're just really gifted? Have they had great success and it's just been handed to them? Do they really have a passion for what they're interested in? And that's what it takes. It's more than just a job. Like, you know, yes, they make good money. And, and yes, they play, in my opinion, the greatest sport in the world, the greatest game in the world. But, you know, it, it goes far beyond just, hey, this is just a job. Like, do you care enough about the game to dedicate yourself to studying film and, and studying defenses and all that? And that leads me into the next quote. This is by head coach Nick Saban, who's – Who's, a, who's a, won a few times. Oh, yeah, won <laughs> quite a few times. says, if you want to be good, you really don't have a lot of choices because it takes what it takes. And, and here's some statistics just to kind of wrap this all up. Because there's a lot of people that think, well, you know, talent alone is, is going to get you somewhere. Well, let, let me hit you with some statistics. As low as 2% of athletes receive a full ride uh, to college, full ride scholarship to college. Very important to understand that as low as 2% receive a full ride. That's not many. No. You know, grades are important. Um, nearly 33% of these athletes at the Division One level in college uh, will quit or will be asked to leave before they graduate. I'm sure you weren't aware of that. Wow. No. Let me hit you with another one. Only 21% of Division One athletes go pro. It's not many, for no, sure. Definitely yeah. not many, but everybody, you see a lot more people in the league now, you know, declaring for the draft their junior year. And I, I on a personal level, don't agree with that, and I'll tell you why. What are you going to do if you go pro and – First year, I've seen it happen. You have a season, a career-ending injury. What are you going to do? What is your next plan of action? Do you have a strategic plan in place to combat and overcome the adversity and the obstacles that have been thrown in your path? And that's an important point for our bachelor's program at Chipola. We've had many athletes go pro out of Chipola. We've had few consider our bachelor's of science and business administration with a focus on management and their thought you can complete it online. And the reason some pro athletes have done that as they kind of retired and transitioned is they want to get into coaching. So they have that bachelor's degree, they finish it. So for those of you who are not here in blue, beautiful Mariana, Florida, who have been here one time and have left for various reasons, consider that our bachelor's program in management is online as well. So that's a great example of finishing that degree because it can help you open doors that right. you don't even imagine now, even with great success right. as a pro athlete. Right. And it's going to take a work ethic. You know, entitlement is the belief that one is an inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. You know, uh, entitlement is the enemy of work ethic. And coaches, if you think for a second that coaches are not monitoring grades, not monitoring social media pages, you're wrong. I, I remember a coach, um, I believe it was like a, a JUCO college somewhere out west, uh, was looking at a recruit. I think it was for baseball. It may have been football. But the kid, you know, had great talent. And the coach said he, he just happened to check out his social media page one day 
and saw a lot of content on there that spoke very poorly of his character, and that's when they withdrew their interest from him. So, you know, it's important for people to understand that being a leader is far more than talent. You know, do you have the grades to back it up? Because grades are important. You know, football or, or whatever kind of sport you play is not going to last forever. So it's important to have a strategic plan in place and be focused on what you want to do. Because here's another statistic to wrap it all up. 86% of college athletes live below the poverty line, 88% graduate, and fewer than 2% turn pro before finishing college. Grades are important. It's important that you know you have fun playing the sport that you enjoy. It don't have to be football. It could be something else. But it's important to remember that at some point you're going to get older you know, and, and your body is, is going to age, and you're not going to Except be able if you're Brady. Right. Well, of course, if you take plant-based protein and <laughs> eat grass, cream, that's and, right. Well, eating ice cream, too. <laughs> but, you know, it's important to ha have a strategic plan in place, and I think people in this day and time get so caught up in the aspect of, well, I got all the talent, you know, somebody else will get me by on the grades. No, you've got to have a work ethic, you know. Nobody wants to go to work for a leader that has poor work ethic, no focus, no vision, no courage, no integrity, no humility, and no commitment. Wow, fantastic points, Rob. So great way to transition. We kind of are still on the side from the Super Bowl. These are some key leadership best practices. Thank you for sharing those with us today. Absolutely, and as a pleasure. It, it, it's it's always good to to come, you know, and, and to be able to talk with you, you know, because there's a balance to it. You know, a lot of people probably watch our podcast and think, man, all you guys talk about is football, football, football. Don't you know how to talk about anything else? Yeah, we can talk about the business side of things too. We brought in the soccer word today as well, right? Oh yeah, that's new. Maybe next week we'll <laughs> we'll talk about uh, water polo. Or... I'll leave that to you. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> all right. I'm good. All right. Thanks, Rob. Yep. See you.